in this video, I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, and I want to be clear, I'm not an expert on light burn, but I, I know a lot of tips and tricks that will help people out that are just starting. Uh, so in this one, I'm just going to show you how to make a quick light out of a random uh, little drawing that we create. So I'm going to come up here and click the ellipse tool or the circle. I'm going to just kind of draw an oval. And after I drew that over, I'm going to go ahead and change that to black. And if you can't see your colors, you can always move this over or whatever the case is. But anyway, now I'm going to duplicate that. So I got to click back on my arrow, my cursor, and I'm going to hit Control D. When I hit Control D, instead of copying it, it did copy it, but it placed it right over the top of the other one. So if I just kind of arrow down, and when I arrow down, it really shot it way out here. See it way down there. So I'm going to Control Z. And this time I'm going to hold my like my Control key down and arrow down so you want to practice with shift keys and control keys because they move things differently based on how you have it set up in your menu so right now i'm hitting control z and i want to delete that off there i'm going to hit delete i'm going to zoom back in i move my mouse wheel we'll click on this one more time control d and that would make a duplicate but if i come over here if i click and hit control c Wherever I have my cursor and I hit control V, that's where it's going to paste it right on the cursor. So control Z, then we'll hit control D for duplicate. And then we'll hold my control key down, hit my arrow down button, or you can move it with your mouse. Now I'm going to highlight both of these. And in a minute, the next video I do, I'm going to show you how to make a clock. But right here, you've got an array tool, a circular array. It makes a lot of different symbols. So since I have them both highlighted, it's going to make an array of both of them. So watch this. I'm going to click it. And normally, if you click that, it'll say like two, right, or one. So now I'm going to just keep this number going up until I get a design that I like. So let's just say I'm going to make a light for a kid's room. All right, so there's the design I like. And I don't like that oval there in the middle, this one here. So I'm going to click on it and hit the delete key, and it's gone. Now I want to go see what this looks like. So I'm going to click on the preview, and there it is. So that's the preview of it. I'm going to hit Control Z. I'm going to take this right back to where we were. This time I'm going to give it like 39 arrays. So I'm going to take this number up even higher. I'm going to type 39, and I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to click on that little oval again. I'm going to delete it. And if you notice right here, we got a gap. If we would add a few more arrays, then it would take care of that gap. So let's control Z and do it one more time. And then let's just arrow this up a little bit more and see if we got rid of that gap. Hit OK. Click on that oval. Delete it. And that looks pretty good, except we've got a gap down here now. So you just continue to do that until you get the way you want it. I'm going to leave it like that. I kind of like it. So I'm going to go see what it looks like again. And there's what it looks like. It's got this odd looking, like a 3D look. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. So this is the light that I want. But one thing I need to do right away is highlight all of it, right mouse click, and I want to convert it to a path so I can do things with it. For instance, if I click on here right now and I come over to my note editor, it doesn't give me any notes. And the reason it doesn't is because I need to make sure that I have everything highlighted, that it's all turned into a path, which means basically that you can manipulate it. Now what I want to do is I want to group it. All of it becomes solid, a solid object. Now I can grab this and move it around wherever I want. So if I grab on this little box here, I can move it wherever I want to move it. Again, we'll go take a look and see what this one looks like. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, uh, create a light for this. So if I click this tool here, Make sure your object's clicked. And I think they call it, it's an off shape symbol. And sometimes it'll look like it's way out here. And if you got inward, it'll be way inside. Uh, so I'm gonna put out. And this is gonna be the line that I cut my light out with. And I want it to be right up next to it. I'm gonna hit okay and I'm gonna zoom in here. And that is not good, I can't see it. So I'm gonna hit control Z. And I'm gonna come back out here again. And I'm gonna click that tool. This time I'm going to give it a little bit more where it's 
So if I click that once, it says it's at 1.00. We'll change it to 0 0.023. Hit OK. So now what's going to happen is it outlines right around the object. And I want to change that to red because that's what I'm going to be cutting out. So that's not actually going to be a line engraved. That's going to be cut out. Then, based on my light base, let's say my light base is um, 72.48 millimeters across. I like to work in millimeters. So I just simply come here, click on the rectangle tool, and I draw like this, just like that. And then I come up here and I type in how many, how many millimeters that is. So right now it says it's uh, two millimeters or whatever the case is. So we're going to type in uh, 72.48. And then I know the depth of those light bases is 14.5. Hit enter. If you look, man. That little design I have is really, really small right now. So we need to make it a lot bigger. So we highlight it and we grab it and we pull it out. So a lot of the material I work with is like three, 300 millimeter material. So I'm going to take a look at what size this is. So this light right now is 169 millimeters. Um, we'll go ahead and change it to 200. So I'm going to click this little lock. And all I have to do is change one number and it changes and keeps it in proportion. So 200, there we go. And then I have my actual plug into the light right here. This is the one that goes into the base. I want to make it exactly lined up. But these two are two different objects. The red line and the black line are two different things. So I want to highlight those two. Before I do this, I want to right mouse click and I want to group them. That way I can hold my control or shift key down and then align these two. So if I take this right now and just pull it over a little bit more this way, and I want to get them aligned where it's center. So I highlight both of them, and I click right here, align center vertical, and there we go. So I'm going to pull all this back over this way. And now what I want to do is I want to pull this down to here. So I have to ungroup it, ungroup, now I just click this red line here, just like that. And I want to click on my node tool right there. And if I highlight some of them nodes, I can just grab and pull down just like this. And then I can hold my control key down. And I notice that I'm having an issue here with this rectangle. So I need to, oh, that's right. I got to change it to a path. So I got to click on it. Right mouse click, convert to path. That means I can manipulate it now. Then I hold my control key down. I got both of these selected. The one thing I want is definitely leave these two corners alone. So I'm going to go ahead and merge them like that. And then I'm going to go back to my node tool. And then I want to delete all these nodes right here. And you don't hit the delete key, you hit the D key. I'm going to go ahead and delete some more. So it gives it that nice angle coming out of the base. Same thing here, delete, delete. And then I can look at this guide across here and it tells me I need to delete basically these right here <clears throat> and this one. Now we're starting to have an issue where I'm going into the thing. So I'm gonna hit Control Z, Control Z. And then instead of going into it, I'm continue Control Z until I get these nodes back. And this time I'm just gonna take out maybe this many nodes, D. And though that way we're not cutting into our object right here. And so follow across right here, basically take out these, hit D. And one thing I could do, and I'm gonna show you how to do this right now, is I could add a node back right here so it doesn't cut into that line. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit I for insert, and then it just insert me a node. And we'll pull it over just a little bit. Just like that. And we'll do the same thing on this one. So I'm going to come across here. And right about here, I'm going to hit I. We'll pull this out just a little bit. Zoom in to see what we got. And that looks pretty good. <clears throat> and now we uh, are basically ready to go. I mean, all I've got to do is set my settings up here. And by the way, these are the settings that I use 
uh, basically for cutting acrylic on my 80 watt. It's probably a little slow. I could probably run at about 17, but I always leave it at a power of 35 for both acrylic and plywood. Um, and there you go. So let's go take a look at it now. And that's what we'll print out. And this will all light up. And you can come down here and add some text below it, that sort of thing. So if this helped you out, that's great. But if for some reason we did add text, let's do that. Let's add some text because I want to teach you something real quick. If I click here and I come and type in uh, text and I hit and I want to center it in there. So to do that, again, I need to make sure this is grouped. Right mouse click group. Then I want to click on text and I want to click on this and I want to hit that little bullseye right there. Then I can click on the text. I can come in here and click on the text right here, zoom back out, and just start holding my shift key down or my control key and just bring that down right in there. It's perfectly in there. Now, if I go to print this right now, I wouldn't want to because it's going to print on the front of my acrylic. Whenever you do lights, you want it to actually print on the reverse side of the acrylic, the back side. So it's a nice clean side facing out. So what you have to do is you just simply, by the way, I would change it to some kind of feel. So I'll change it to green and we'll change it to a feel here. And I need to move this up because the last thing we want to do is cut. So we're going to take this cut and move it down like that. And this feel right here would change the power and all that sort of thing. And now we come here and look and you can see it says text. It's all good. And now what I want to do is I want to flip all this before I do any kind of uh, cutting. So I just come up here and flip it. And now we're good to go. And that will print it out in reverse. And that way, when we plug it into the light base, it'll be good to go. Hope that helped you out. I know it's kind of quick, but the beauty about videos is you can rewind them. And the other thing is, I could have moved this up a little bit. And I wonder if I still can. I'm going to write. I know this is a long video. I'm going to ungroup. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click on these nodes here. And I'm going to highlight these four. I'm just going to pull that up. Whoops. Control Z. Highlight these four. And let's see if I can pull that up. Just like that. And bring it right in there. Then it doesn't give it that effect that it had uh, where it's like a lot of wasted space so we can go back take a look at that again real quick there you go hope that helped you out